this is John from kvarvprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on inheritance in Java. So at the end of the last tutorial I said we'd look at the equals method in this tutorial but I realized that um, there are some things um, about equals which to understand them it helps if you know a bit about inheritance. So I'm going to postpone the um, equals tutorial and we're going to look here at the very important topic of inheritance. And I just want to take um, a little moment just to thank everyone who's left comments. Um, your comments really motivate me to create these free tutorials and they are very much appreciated, so thanks very much. Okay, so um, let's create a new class here. I've got my main method set up in this kind of class in Eclipse. Um, and so far in these tutorials, I've been creating classes in the same file. But um, I'm going to switch now to creating classes in separate files, which is what you will do most of the time in your programs. So let's um, just expand this. And I've, I'm just creating everything in the default package here. And we haven't covered packages yet. So I'm going to right click actually the source folder or the project folder, it doesn't matter, and go to class. And apologies for the background noise, by the way, because people are working on. Um, the flat opposite mine and uh, wherever I go there's always someone renovating an apartment nearby. Okay, so let's create a class here called um, machine and click finish. And now just because, um, just, just from saying public class machine in a file called machine.java I can already create objects from that machine. Um, I can create a variable of type machine, so machine, um, call it Mac1. Uh, I can say new machine like this, which actually allocates memory for my machine object. Uh, and I can combine those also into one statement by saying machine Mac1 equals new machine, which is what you do most of the time in Java. Um, and let's give this machine uh, some methods. So I'll give it a public void start method. Let's imagine that all machines can be started. And I'll say sysout here. And for some reason my um, sysout shortcut's not working. So I'll say system.out.println and I'll just copy that. And because I'm going to use it again later. And let's say here machine started like this. And I'll also give it a public void stop like this and in there we can say machine machine stopped okay so um, I can now call those methods using this variable which I pointed at my machine object so I can say mac1 dot started dot start and mac1 dot stop um, and since those methods are just doing sysouts at the moment, if I run that, it's just going to display some stuff in my console here, which is coming from here. So you need to have a good grasp of defining methods and calling them before you move on to inheritance, really. Otherwise, you'll get confused. And what I'm going to do now is create a new class. So let's right-click the project folder again, go to new class. And let's call this car and click finish. Um, now of course I can I can create variables of type car. Let's call this car one, and I can point those at car objects. Let's have one object here. Um, and car has no method. If I do car one, no methods. Well, actually, it does have a few methods, and these are actually inherited from a, um, a class called object, which is actually the ultimate ancestor of all objects in Java. But aside from those, there are no methods that I've defined here. But supposing I go to my car class now and I say car extends machine. And what that means is that um, car is a child class of machine, or machine is the parent of car. Uh, we, we can say that car is derived from machine or that car is a machine or that car inherits from machine. Um, this is all good terminology. And what this means is that um, now a car is already identical to a machine. So um, now I can say car1.start 
and car one dot stop. The fact that I've said uh, public class car extends machine means car has now got all the methods that machine has. Now of course we can add new methods to car. So I've got my car child class um, which, um, which uh, inherits all the methods of machine and I can add more methods to it. I can say for example public void um, I don't know wipe wind wipe wind wind shield and let's give that some functionality I'll just put another sysout in there and I'll say um, wiping wind shield so now of course um, car is identical to machine except it's got another method now that machine doesn't have so I can say um, let's put it between start and stop car one dot wipe windshield um, so this is inheritance in action um, even if you're, you've got a class which um, which you don't have the source code to usually um, except for um, under certain particular circumstances usually you can extend it to create your own version of it and then you can add new methods to it which is really useful you can't do that with some classes for example um, the string class is um, it's a final class um, and it can't be extended but most classes you can extend so um, let's uh, another thing you can do is um, you can override methods I'm just going to touch on the basics of this here but here for example we've got a public void start method and let's copy that and go into car and paste it in um, and change this to car started so what I've done here is I've got um, a method in the parent class with this header public void start takes no parameters and returns only void and I've defined one exactly the same as that in car and it's important that the header part of the method should be the same if you want to override a method um, and now when I call start in car it's going to call the car specific version rather than the machine version so we say that this method has overridden the method in the parent class it's basically replaced it um, now there's, there's quite a bit more to say about inheritance as you might imagine um, but I'm just going to probably um, show you one other thing here and before I do that actually I'm going to delete that and show you a better way of overriding a method and um, this is Eclipse specific but there are similar techniques that you can use um, similar shortcuts in any decent IDE so NetBeans or IntelliJ IDEA possibly not BlueJ which um, some university students are forced to use and it's uh, uh, no offence to the creator of it but that's um, an, I an IDE that's well out of date by now in my opinion anyway um, I'm going to right click here within the, the body of car and I'm going to go to source override implement methods and I'm going to click um, so these are all the methods of machine and you can see methods of object as well which is the secretly the ultimate parent class of both machine and car but I want to let's say I want to override the start method in machine I just click start and click OK and it fills in the method for me together with a stub this is actually calling the corresponding method in a parent class so this would mean that car still has a start method but it just does um, it just calls the, the parent class version basically saying machine started but if I get rid of this body now I can put my own stuff in there um, whoops didn't want that let's just copy this being as my sysout shortcuts mysteriously stop working and put in here um, car started so we've overridden this just as before so the shortcut for that is right click in the body of your class go to source and override implement methods in Eclipse now you'll notice Eclipse puts this uh, it's called an annotation it's an at sign and the override um, an override well um, this is actually a class name here which is why it's got a capital O um, but um, we're not going to worry about that now but the bottom line is if you put an at sign and override with a capital O before your overridden method it will check that it really is an override so if I misspell this now 
it will complain and say you know, start de is is not in fact a method that exists in the parent class. Whereas without that override annotation, of course, it would just create a new method called um, with a different name, um, which wouldn't do anything. So I'm not calling it at the moment. So if you want to override a method and you want to check that you really are overriding a method in the parent class, um, then putting this annotation in just helps you spot errors, but it's not it's not necessary. So one last thing for this tutorial, um, I just want to say quickly a bit about um, variables because if we've got like um, a uh, if I've got a private string name in machine, um, let's set that to um, I don't know I am a machine. Or um, maybe it would be more appropriate to say machine um, type 1. There we go. Now, um, because I've declared it private, this can only this variable can only be accessed within this machine class. So if I went to car, the child class, and let's say I created a method public void show info like this, um, and then supposing I had a sysout and I tried to access name in there, so let's say car name um, plus name, it's going to give me an error there. Um, it's saying the field machine.name is not visible, and that's because I've declared it private. And we're going to look at public, private, and protected a little bit more um, in a future tutorial all of its own. But if you declare something private, it's only accessible within the class. So that means within these brackets, the bracket that opens here after the name of the class and it finishes here, you can only access this name within here. But if you get rid of private, um, you can now access this anywhere within the package that machine is in. And we haven't looked at packages explicitly yet, but car and app are both within the default package here. So you can now access it. And if I run this, well, let's call that let's call that method. Let's say car one dot show info, um, and run that. Then you'll see car can access it. Car name machine type one. Um, yeah, did I? Yeah, yeah. I was I was wondering where car name came from, but of course I typed it here. Okay. Um, and if you want to give this an access specifier, which you really should ideally you can make it protected and protected means that you can access this um, anywhere within the package and also from any child class so um, this will still work so I just wanted to show you that quickly here and we're going to touch on it more in future tutorials for sure um, and uh, don't be don't be tempted to try to override variables because and results will be horrible um, it's not a good idea. You should only override methods. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. And in the next tutorial, we're going to take an initial look at interfaces in Java. So there's a lot to say about interfaces, but we're just going to make a start on them in the next tutorial. So join me again then, and until then, happy coding.